Stellenbosch University plans to implement a wastewater-based surveillance platform to detect institutional COVID-19 outbreaks on two of its campuses. Sampling devices will be placed at specific settings. This is to sample sewer lines from student residences on certain days of the week. Dr. Edward Archer, a research associate in the Department of Microbiology, says the platform will serve as an additional measure to increase and improve surveillance of defined communities such as campus residences. He joins us now live for more. Dr. Archer, thank you very much uh, for being on the show. Great to have you with us. So tell us more about how this plan works and what kinds of information it could supply you with. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the, the concept behind this wastewater-based epidemiology approach is to look and identify genetic fragments of the virus um, coming from individuals that are um, infected, and this is then passed um, in the excretion product in the wastewater where we can now have a collective pool of these genetic fragments or biomarkers of exposure to actually see what's going on on a community level. So there's been um, tremendous advancement in the, on the national scale on um, applying this concept on um, wastewater treatment works to look at communal infections um, over geographical regions. And um, this is actually now an expansion where our proof of concepts came into um, campus residences where we've got a huge number of individuals that might present asymptomatic um, or even serve as um, infection hotspots. So our internal effort here was to safeguard our campus community um, with this current infection or this current pandemic and also then um, to try and prevent the rise in infections um, from these defined communities. So how detailed is the information that you get from this wastewater sampling? Can you, for instance, tell how many uh, students at one particular residents are infected and track the spread of that infection over a period of time? Yeah, it's quite a complicated exercise um, to really pinpoint to an individual level how many people are infected. But what is, what is so fascinating about this is that you've got your, um, your location of where you implement your sampling um, is actually based on a specific a number of people that are connected to that sewage line. So if the information is available on how many people are um, indeed present at the, at the residence, um, some normalization, and that's where a huge team of us um, comes in with modelers and epidemiologists and um, a huge team um, to actually try and evaluate on how we can use this very unique signal that we get similar to diagnostic testing and um, back calculate or normalize against um, certain parameters of our sample to see whether we can get to a point where we can trace how many individuals are in fact um, infected. But regarding the, the normal way of how we, how we perform this analysis, it's quite similar to diagnostic testing where um, instead of just having one individual, you've got now various individuals and establishing just how many people contributed to that waste is something that needs to get into a modeling phase um, before we can get defined answers on this. So testing of wastewater provides information after the fact, um, how many people are already infected. It's not preventative. So how is this information going to be utilized to formulate a plan in terms of reducing the spread or uh, curbing the spread? Well, I think there's various approaches. So, so either either moving into a qualitative state on just looking at the presence, absence of the virus. Um, it has been shown on a global scale that um, the viral shedding or shedding of these genetic markers from infected people, even though they are um, showing symptoms or having having been diagnosed with the virus or with the the, the disease, or whether they even haven't um, presented symptoms and haven't gone for for clinical testing. Um, these markers will then be in the wastewater. So, in fact, using these um, these viral indicators has actually shown that um, the shedding can happen weeks before a rise in hospitalizations and infections happen on a community scale. So this is something that we're continuously investigating in the Western Cape now for the onset of the third wave. Um, it's already been happening in the other parts of the province um, and our, our routine surveillance efforts along with the South African Medical Research Council in the project that we're involved with um, is looking at when we will start seeing this prevalence in the wastewater from um, asymptomatic or symptomatic people shedding um, before hospitalizations actually increase or cases increase on a clinical scale. Has this program been uh, implemented successfully elsewhere in the world? 
Yes, yeah. So it's it's been a huge collaborative, and um, especially from from the from the developed world, um, there's been tremendous advancement with um, leading organisations actually working together. And I must commemorate this 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 project is actually now almost I'm, I want to say a break off from from a larger national COVID surveillance network, um, which is uh, called the South African Collaborative COVID-19 Environmental Surveillance System um, that has been um, running since April 2020 this year on a national basis. Um, also, uh, 60 network members, about 20 academic and municipal and industry institutions working together with this wastewater collaborative and um, providing dashboards and information to, to end users and stakeholders to try and see whether we can use this as a very good um, addendum to early warning system surveillance. Thank you very much. Very interesting work that you're doing, and thank you very much for being part of the, the efforts to, to address COVID-19 uh, in South Africa. That uh, was Dr. Edward Archer. Uh, he's a research associate at the Department of Microbiology at Stellenbosch University.